Here's an interesting barber shop. Look, I'm gonna go get a haircut. Good morning. That's it. Better? <laughs> Welcome back from Dublin, Texas. There's an interesting, some interesting history here. And while wow, there's a railroad here and an old railroad station there, now this video is not about railroad stuff. I know some of you like that. I like it. it looks like there's an old water. Uh, might have been an old windmill here in town. One of these big round things, and there's another round thing over there, which is usually uh, some sort of water container, a basin. But being right here by the railroad, you know, maybe it was uh, for filling old steam locomotives. But, and the place for watering horses. But this, that's, that's all the more this is going to be about, about possible railroad stuff. There's a story over here. There's a slogan here I keep seeing in town, the keepers of sweet. <laughs> keepers of sweet, what the heck, right? All right, hang on, I'm going to call it across the road. The history is more about this facility here, the Dublin Bottling Works. So I've come upon a bit of a mystery and has everything to do with what's in this bag. Now, if you're from Texas, you probably call it a sack. Where I'm from, we call it a bag. <laughs> we'll get back to what's in here later in the video. As I understand it, Dublin Bottle Works was founded by a fellow named Bill Foster. I believe that's Bill right there. <laughs> it looks it says Dr. Pepper on his shirt. And the little girls it says, I'm I'm a pepper. Anybody remember that slogan? Sitting on a Dr. Pepper cooler. Dr. Pepper, by the way, is America's oldest soft drink. And it was invented by a pharmacist. Kind of like Coca-Cola was invented by a pharmacist. This is where Dr. Pepper was first bottled. And I, I think the I think the pharmacy where it was invented was in either Waco or Dallas. I, I, no, I think it was north of Dallas in Plano, Texas. Uh, and when they first started bottling it, some, it was, was down here in Dublin at this facility. And this is the oldest the oldest bottler of Dr. Pepper. Well, they don't. I don't think they bottle Dr. Pepper anymore, though. There's a there's a weird twist to this. They're getting ready to open here in a little bit. So I think we're gonna go in. I think they have a museum here too. There was some sort of misunderstanding or disagreement when Dr. Pepper grew, as I understand it now, and I gotta add this disclaimer, this my, all my video it applies to all my videos. At no time do I ever claim to have all my facts and dates straight. But you'll get the gist of the story here. There was a disagreement on whether he could, they could keep making the original recipe here. At some point, as Dr. Pepper grew and other soft drink makers, they started using that high fructose corn syrup or something as a sweetener. They continued to use the original recipe and use pure cane sugar here. And as I understand it, the original bottler here refused to go with the new recipe. They're going to keep making it with pure cane sugar. And uh, whatever, there was some loss, suit, and you know, legal battle. Anyway, they've, I guess they've uh, had to forfeit their rights to to make Dr. Pepper with that recipe. Anyway. Now keep that bag in mind I showed you. That plays a part. Now, the Dublin Bottle Works continues to make soft drinks with pure cane sugar, just not Dr. Pepper. 
so they have some yummy flavors i hope to maybe purchase some to take with me walking down an alley i find on this building i think this was one of dr pepper's original slogans hey cowboy drink a bite to eat 10 2 and 4. that was supposed to be a sugary pick me upper between the uh, meal hours 10 o'clock two o'clock and four o'clock he doesn't need a sugary pick me upper once in a while right oh and old one eye <laughs> old one eye smoked sardines <laughs> huh let's see if i can find me a can of those That's a big bottle of root beer there. <laughs> Dublin, Texas root beer. Always made with pure cane sugar. It's, it's the good stuff. Dublin Bottling Works. Since 1891. Keepers of the sweet. There's one of these plaques up here. Uh, get ready to hit the pause button if you want to read it. These are the lines uh, that you still. Uh, yes, so those are all the drinks that we You still, still make all these. Mm -hmm. And these are all available over at the. Uh, all flavors are all available over there? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I can mix and match a case. Definitely. And we do, be nice. I don't know if they mention you, but we do give free samples. So if you haven't tried any of our drinks, you can try some of them to figure out which ones you like and stuff. So what is this, like a cleaning machine? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so how we usually start the tour is we start it off over here okay. and we explain the candlelight station, but the candlelight station is actually at the very end of our bottling line. It's just a little bit easier to kind of go around in a U shape. Um, but basically, um, when the bottles are done getting filled and washed and everything, they'll come right down here and we'll have workers basically just using this, these two machines to inspect the bottles before we send them out to the public. Um, they'll use the lights to shine through the bottles just so we can better see into them. And they're really just looking for the color, the fill line, um, if there's any cracks in the bottle and if there's any kind of foreign objects floating around. Um, but then we can come right over here. And this machine is our Miller Hydro and this is what actually starts the very beginning of our bottling line. And just like you said, it's really just a big cleaning machine. The sanitizer. Exactly. Um, yeah. When we did use the reusable bottles, this machine is what washed them all for us. Um, and then it just kind of goes all the way around. It's a massive machine. Um, oh, it, oh, nice. Okay, like, uh, and a drink Dr. Pepper, five cents. Yeah. You know. yeah. Um, so this machine right here is after the Miller Hydro, and this actually is what fills our bottles with the syrup, the carbonated water, and it'll cap the bottles. So as you can see, we have three different parts, so they'll just kind of come down the line and make their way through. Um, and this machine is what fills it with the syrup. That machine back there is what has the carbonated water, and then obviously this machine caps it. It's so very cool. Yeah, yeah. This is, and this is all like 1930s equipment. Um, this, they're a little bit older. Actually, this machine back here is from the 1929, um, but everything else is from about this, uh, about the 60s, um, 50s, 60s. So. But this machine, like I was telling you, is actually the, the oldest machine piece that we have. And, and what's this do? So this, um, whenever the bottles are done getting filled, the bottles actually come out with the syrup on the bottom and the carbonated water on top, and they stay separated. Um, and this machine is what mixes it together for us. Um, so I like to explain it kind of like a giant fair, so it'll move in a big circular motion all the way around. Oh, just okay. Just mixes those two things together. And then they head straight down the belt, and they'll go.
time to mix and match some of these. That's it. <laughs> There's still the mystery hasn't been solved, but I got the unofficial guided tour uh, real quick. This is right on Main Street in uh, in Dublin. I mixed and matched a case. See, we got retro grape, Dublin Texas root beer, Texas orange dream. Vintage cola. Ooh, and red, red cream soda. I doubled up on a little bit of grape and root beer. <laughs> but that's it. Yum. I don't drink I don't drink a lot of soft drinks. So that'll last me a while. And it's premium stuff with the real McCoy with the pure cane sugar. Let's get back to the mystery which still isn't going to be solved even when I get back to that bag of what's in that bag that I bought hmm. so here's the mystery you know it was in the bag a Dr. Pepper and it says right on there Imperial Cane Sugar Imperial Pure Cane Sugar well if because of that lawsuit they're not allowed to affiliate themselves with Dr. Pepper anymore, who's making this? And it would seem after all that fuss, why not just revert back and let them produce the good old original Dr. Pepper here, where it was first bottled in like whatever, 19 whatever it was, or 1891. So who's making this? It turns out Dr. Pepper is making this. They have a vintage series that they make and they put just, just enough pure cane sugar in it to be able to claim that they do so and no more. Carbonated water, cane sugar, caramel colors, blah, 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 blah. Maybe that's not true. Under ingredients, it, it says cane sugar. Maybe that's just what the girl told me. Because it lists cane sugar, but it does not list any of the uh, high fructose corn syrup. And they would have to list it if they put it, they put it in. So maybe Dr. Pepper is actually making their original recipe on a limited basis. Why didn't they just leave well enough, let them do it here? They ended up making... That's the mystery. Anyway, they only run the bottle line. We didn't get the full tour of the bottle line in operation. That's roughly 1930s equipment, still in operation, making all these other uh, flavors. So they only run that line as the warehouse, the inventory of the warehouse goes down. They decide, okay, we need to run off a couple of batches of stuff. So uh, it wasn't, wasn't in operation. We didn't get to see that. Uh, anyway, that ends the, I guess that ends the mystery. Got this at Walmart, by the way. Made with Imperial Sugar from Dr. Pepper. And they wouldn't allow them to do it. And they in turn decided that they would go ahead and do it. Bad, that's bad business. Anyway, we're heading 
further east. <laughs> so, thanks for coming along today. Thanks for watching my videos. Um, the usual, like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Till next time, I'll see you.